All right, folks, thank you very much for joining today's webinar here. We're gonna be covering the topic, uh, Prototypes to Production with SLS 3D Printing. Uh, this is presented to you guys by uh, 3D Chimera and uh, Centratech. Centratech is gonna be our SLS 3D printing uh, partner, and we're gonna be highlighting their technology a little bit today. Um, before we get uh, too far into things, I'd like to do a couple quick introductions. Um, First is myself, my name is Alex. Um, I'm the co-founder and CEO here at 3D Chimera. Um, I think most of you folks know us already, but for those of you who uh, perhaps have been uh, received the shared link, I'll give you guys a brief introduction in a moment. Uh, but our organization, um, we're based down in uh, Miami, Florida. We specialize in 3D printing and 3D scanning technologies, and we help companies implement those to um, improve their business systems. Um, I also like to introduce uh, Dominic Solonecki. Uh, Dominic is the uh, CEO at Centratech, and uh, he's actually joining us on the line all the way from Switzerland. Hey, how are you? I can't start the video. <laughs> <laughs> you have to give uh, permission to me, Alex. All right, let's see if we get you on there. You can see your smiling face. There we go. <laughs> all right, beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, Happy to join you. Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, also on the line, we have uh, Liz. Liz is our marketing director here at 3D Chimera, and she's going to be uh, gathering all of your uh, questions uh, throughout this session today. So if you have any questions or uh, comments, you can always uh, enter those in the uh, tech system. And um, at the end, we'll have a Q&A session where we'll cover any of those. And of course, uh, Liz, if you see anything that uh, stands out, um, it makes sense to cover right in the middle of the topic. Let's go ahead and do that. We're happy to do that and uh, make sure that everyone gets their questions answered. Will do. Thank you. All right. Perfect. Okay, guys. So um, we've got a, a bunch of uh, stuff that we're planning to cover here for everybody today. Um, uh, first thing I'll do is uh, give you guys a brief introduction about 3D Chimera. So I mentioned uh, we're down here in beautiful Miami, Florida. So um, if you ever want to see any of the 3D printers we'll be talking about today in person, uh, make a weekend of it, come on down. Um, we have all the 3D printing technology that we sell in-house here. One of the things that makes our organization different is that um, we actually use all the 3D printers um, that we sell. So we're not just purely an organization that sells equipment. Um, we also provide services and support for our customers. Um, our real specialization is helping folks to, to truly implement the technology to to grow their business. And so in order to do that, we've got to use this equipment every day. In fact, it, a little later in the session, I'll walk you guys through our shop so that you can see uh, some of the Centratech 3D printers up close and personal. Um, but uh, you know, that's a, a tidbit about our, our organization. We're very proud that we were recently recognized as one of the top 10 3D printing companies um, in the United States by Manufacturing Technology Insights uh, this year. Um, and uh, for those of you who haven't met us, we are a small team. Uh, we're about six folks down here in Miami, um, you know, focused solely on this additive technology and, and 3D scanning space. Um, we work with a really broad range of customers. So, um, you know, all the way from, you know, huge multinational companies and universities to startup or organizations and even individuals who are, uh, you know, uh, bringing new products to market. So um, we have really a broad range of experience and it's really, exciting for us to be able to take uh, perhaps an application or an implementation uh, that we've done uh, for a large company and apply that in a small organization or vice versa. You know, often we see really innovative solutions from, you know, small teams who are kind of pushing the envelope and we can bring that innovation uh, to the larger organizations that we work with. Um, and so that's really uh, like a hidden capability that we have here on our team and uh, something that we certainly like to make you guys aware of. Um, specifically in terms of the products that we distribute, um, we have a couple different categories. So on the left, we distribute 3D printers. The three brands that we distribute primarily are the German RepRap 3D printers, which are FDM style, the Centratech 3D printers, which are SLS 3D printers, and the Tiertime 3D printers, which are a, a printer that is primarily um, optimized for uh, like educational applications. Uh, we also work with HP on the 3D scanning side. In terms of materials, we work closely with both Dow and DuPont. Um, and then on the software side, um, we work with ANSYS Space Claim as well as Geomagic. These are really nice complements with our 3D scanning systems. 
So today we're going to focus pretty much completely on the Centratec technology. I want to give you guys an um, insight into how the SLS uh, technology works, um, where it makes sense for uh, different types of applications, and uh, how you guys might be able to utilize that uh, within your business moving forward. So before we do that, I always like to learn a little bit more about the audience. I have a, a quick poll that I'm going to launch uh, for everybody. And um, we'd love if you guys can uh, help us learn a little bit more about yourselves so that we can uh, start to uh, work with you guys a little bit more closely here on the session. So give me just a moment and I'm going to go ahead and launch our poll. This will take just a few seconds. So if you guys can, uh, if that polls pop it up on your screen, if you don't mind uh, clicking through and, and answering, I think there's four questions there. The first is uh, how often do you use 3D printing? Uh, the second is where do you typically 3D print, either in-house or at service bureaus? Um, the third is how experienced are you uh, with SLS 3D printing? Are you a beginner? Are you intermediate? Are you an expert? And then uh, the final question is, uh, what are your most common 3D printing applications? Are you looking at prototypes? Are you looking at jigs and fixtures, tooling, functional parts, um, short run production, or, or other applications? All right, so let's give that about 15 more seconds. All right, great. So uh, it looks like um, we've got a variety of, of uh, levels of experience here. Um, we have uh, a lot of folks are using 3D printing every day. Um, doing that in-house looks like everybody's in the beginner and intermediate level and actually spread pretty evenly across all of our applications. Uh, so that that's fantastic. Um, we definitely are excited to see that and uh, would be happy to uh, see if we can tailor our conversation a little bit towards that. Great. Okay, I want to make sure, um, Dominic and Liz, is everybody able to see the screen okay there? Yeah, Fine. I see it great. Okay, cool. All right, fantastic. All right, good. So uh, I'm just gonna jump right into things then. Uh, so prototypes to production is the focus of our conversation today. Um, we wanna showcase for you some examples of uh, utilizing the SLS technology for, uh, for applications that really span the gambit. Um, and it, you know, the SLS technology is uniquely positioned for a lot of these things. Um, from the poll, I saw that a, a fairly good chunk of folks um, haven't really gotten a, a, a lot of time to work with SLS technology before. So we want to highlight some of those differences here uh, in the process and make sure that um, you guys can clearly identify the best applications for SLS moving forward um, or FDM, which is what most people are familiar with. So starting with what most people know, the FDM process or FFF process, that's the filament based 3D printing process. Um, we're starting with a spool of filament. We're running that through an extruder, which is kind of like um, a hot glue gun, if you will. Uh, and we're building up our object one layer at a time. In that technology, um, you are building your main part, and if your part has complex geometry, you're also building support material for that part. That support material, if it's built with a dissolvable material, can be dissolved away, or if it's done with the same material, um, it would be broken away from the part. So there's some post-processing there um, in order to clean up the process. Um, the SLS technology is a pretty big difference. So in this technology, we're gonna start with a powderized polymer. Um, so typically with the Centratech technology, we're looking at either a PA-12, a nylon material, or a TPE, a flexible material. 
Um, and you start with this powder and effectively what happens is we wipe the powder over the build area. Uh, we have a laser that, that shines off of a Galvo system and that starts to center um, your individual part one uh, layer at a time. So we're still splitting our part up into layers, but instead of kind of melting the plastic by pushing it out of a nozzle, in this case, we're actually tracing the geometry with the laser and uh, building that part. What's really cool about this technology is the support material is effectively the powder that surrounds the part. And so uh, you end up with a uh, capability of creating super complex geometries. Then when you're done, you can literally just shake off or brush off the part and you have your complex geometry. So, um, you know, it's really fantastic for um, working with geometries that maybe are providing challenges in the FDM process. Um, so for example, SLS is great with super fine surface details, perhaps textures, perhaps uh, super thin wall parts from let's say a prototype of an injection molded part. Um, these are very easy to do in the technology and there's really no constraint there. Um, in the SLS technology, you also have the ability to nest your parts in 3D. So for those of you who are familiar with the FDM process, you have your build plate and you can fill up that whole build plate, however big it is, um, and you can you know, print all those parts at the same time. And some printers you can even do sequentially, so you can do you know, part one and then part two and part three. And that's a, that can be a way to get some efficiency there. Um, the SLS process is really, really interesting because we can build our first layer parts, right? And then right on top of that, we can build our next layer. And no matter how complex or interlocked those parts are, we can continue to build that geometry. So um, you can really get a ton of efficiency in the SLS process that you can't get um, in the FDM process. And it's one of the reasons why um, a lot of the service bureaus out there, especially um, when they're first starting, they typically implement the SLS technology because they can get that massive efficiency out of the technology. You know, up to a few years ago, um, it was really impossible for any, you know, normal business to bring in SLS technology because you were looking at price points on systems at, you know, 300,000, 500,000, a million dollars. Sintertex completely disrupted that, um, that environment by offering their lower cost systems that are um, able to have equivalent performance of the big systems, but for smaller print volumes. And so um, in, with those smaller print volumes comes a massive savings in price. And um, it's really opened up the market um, for folks who are looking to implement SLS technology um, in their own applications. Uh, we see folks who are using these parts in automotive applications, uh, we see folks who are using these parts in, you know, on-body applications for, you know, Internet of Things devices. Um, we see end-use parts across the spectrum. Um, and, of course, we have lots of people who use it for the traditional things like prototyping, um, small jigs and fixtures, tooling, uh, that sort of thing. The FDM process, of course, does have its strengths. One of the beautiful things about the FDM process is you can print really, really big parts. So if you're looking to print giant size parts, you know, a meter in size, let's say, the FDM process is always going to be a better choice than SLS. Um, you, of course, you have a lot of variety of materials in the FDM process. So um, if you need something different, let's say, than the PA12 nylon or the TPE materials, uh, maybe a PEAK or an Ultem, then, then still today the FDM or the uh, FFF process can work really well for you. Um, so there are definitely advantages and disadvantages to each. Um, hopefully that uh, gave you guys a little bit of a taste of where you might look at using uh, FDM or, or the SLS technology. Uh, what I'd like to do is do show you guys a, a brief um, example of some of our uh, FDM printers as well as some of the, the types of parts we commonly print off of them. The main brand that we represent from the FDM uh, process are the German RepRap 3D printers. These printers are based out of Munich, Germany. Uh, the smallest machine is roughly like 14 by 14 inches, and the largest is up to a meter in size. Um, you can print a whole variety of parts, a whole variety of materials. Here's some examples of some things that we've done. Um, so this is a carbon fiber nylon part in the bottom left-hand corner. You know, of course, you can still do some serial production on an FDM process, although um, you know, each of these parts that we're looking at here was probably like a 12-hour print. So um, you're not going to get the kind of efficiency that you're looking at in the SLS process. But functional parts, you know, um, uh, is, a, is really the strength of the technology. Now, 
Uh, the SLS technology is, is really a different animal, um, but in a lot of ways can solve the same sorts of problems, uh, but from a different perspective. And actually, if you uh, see this photograph here in the background, this actually is, I believe, uh, an image of the Centratech kit. And um, what you're seeing here, that dark color, that's the, the, the part of the powder that's being centered. That line kind of coming across on an angle below the text um, is the edge of the laser line there. In fact, you can see some of the bright colors of the laser underneath there, and you can see the outline of the remainder of the part there. All that, that other lighter gray color around that, that's that that powder that's acting as a support material to create these complex geometries. So within the Centratech lineup, there are fundamentally two different product lines that um, we offer here in the United States. The first is on the left, that's the Centratech kit. That's a smaller print volume, it's roughly about 4.2 inches um, in a cube, so like 4.2 by 4.2 by 4.2 inches. Um, this printer is actually um, our best-selling printer here at 3D Chimera, we find that uh, Organizations, big and small, really love this technology. Um, it's a really interesting system because it's an open material SLS 3D printer. So um, if you are developing new materials, if you're looking to, to try some of the new materials that are hitting the market, um, this system allows you the flexibility to control the, the laser pattern and some of the temperatures in the chamber um, to actually optimize the system uh, to work um, with the, the new materials or your new applications. Uh, the system on the right is the Centratech S2, which was uh, recently launched. Um, it, Dominic is going to share uh, a good amount about that printer, so I won't go too deep into it. But uh, these images aren't quite to scale, but they sort of give you an idea. The S2 is a much, much bigger system. Um, you'll be able to see that a little better um, in our video. You're looking at about a 6-inch diameter by about uh, 16 inches almost deep. So a dramatically bigger uh, build volume. It's definitely built for short run production and is great if you have that occasional larger part. Um, we're seeing lots of interest in the S2s and we're just starting to ship those here in the US market. So we're very excited to uh, have Dominic on the line and uh, have the ability to show us a little bit more about those in a moment. Uh, so to give you guys a sneak peek of the types of parts that we can commonly print in SLS, if you guys follow us on Instagram, um, you've probably seen a lot of these images, but you can see the super fine details. If we look, for example, at this chest piece on the bottom left-hand corner, it's a little hard to see, but if you look in the window there, there's actually a double helix in there. Um, so, you know, the kind of hidden details and small details in the parts are really, really incredible. Um, we're able to get very strong parts, functional parts for, for all sorts of applications. Uh, really the ideal application we say is anything where you're looking to do a quantity of like one to about 500 pieces. If you're doing more than that, it is possible, but uh, you know, your parts ideally are on the smaller side because there is of course time uh, required to produce those parts. What we find is that this is really a gap that right now there's not a great solution. So you know, if you have a couple thousand pieces, then you know perhaps injection molding can make sense and um, you know, if you're doing even greater quantities, of course, you know, you can have all sorts of uh, multi-cavity injection molds or, you know, other technologies. But in this small range, um, which is where we're, you know, constantly starting to see new applications where you might have customized products, you might have products that are uh, perhaps optimized for a particular mating technology, maybe for a particular vehicle, let's say, or for an accessory for, um, let's say, a, a video game system that's you know new to the market. And perhaps uh, you might have 10 varieties of that. And so you had 10 varieties across 10 systems and you wanted to have a thousand pieces in stock for each one. You had to do you know a bunch of injection molds for that. Your cost can really skyrocket. So you know with 3D printing, we have the advantage of completely avoiding that complexity of the injection mold. Of course, there's a very real cost there. You know, injection molds on the the low end are maybe you know five thousand dollars, and on the high end can be you know a couple hundred thousand dollars. And for some of the geometries that we can three D print, it's not even an option. It's just not even a technology that can produce the types of geometries that we're able to do um, with the three D printing technology. So uh, you know you avoid tooling costs. Uh, let's say you make a design, you have some issues. Uh, there is no cost to doing a design change. You just send over a new file. There's no time required to create technical drawings. There's no back and forth with tooling. 
Um, you can open up new markets by offering mass customization. Let's say you know, there's a product that you have that makes sense for a customer to maybe offer a 3D scan of their face and you make a mating component to that or perhaps they want their initials on the product. Um, you can do that type of mass customization in 3D printing and it's, it's no more difficult than printing the same part every time or a completely different part in that print volume. Um, so it can really be a beautiful way to, um, you know, open up a new market there. Of course, you can take advantage of just-in-time manufacturing. You don't have to carry all this, this, this inventory. You can produce on demand, which reduces your carrying costs. And at the end of the day, the bottom line is it allows you to save time. It allows you to save money. And so, you know, I think a lot of times people enter the 3D printing market. They're looking at the FDM or the FFF systems. They kind of become disillusioned with this idea that, uh, 3D printing is going to be able to, uh, you know, truly affect the manufacturing of how they make products today. And I think with the FDM technology, in a lot of cases, that can that is true. It's it's too slow. It's it's too challenging. But SLS is a completely different story. With this technology, um, we really do have the ability to dramatically um, impact product development cycles, and sometimes completely disrupt the way that parts are currently made. And it all comes down to you know, we think of these three basic things. So the first and the most important is design. So like any process, you wanna optimize your product for the technology that is being used to make it. So of course we can take a part that's been designed for injection molding and we can 3D print a prototype of it, and that's fine. But if you really wanna get that maximum efficiency out of the system, you wanna optimize your part for the SLS process, right? We wanna think about what are its strengths, what are its weaknesses, and let's take advantage of those strengths and let's avoid the weaknesses. One of the interesting things about 3D printing is, unlike, let's say, injection molding, if you took a design that was maybe designed for, let's say, sheet metal and try and injection mold it, that's just not even a possibility. Um, in additive technologies, it is a possibility. You certainly can produce that geometry, but um, you know, instead of a tooler coming back to you and going, sorry, go back to the drawing board, the printer will allow you to do that, but you have to understand and know the material properties of what you're trying to do and the design constraints of that. So um, we say design is the most key aspect of this. Um, and this is something where 3D Chimera can really offer service to your organization. Um, we train organizations all over the world um, how to implement design for additive manufacturing processes within their organizations. We train engineers, we train uh, product developers, industrial designers, and how you can best take advantage of that. And you know, we usually bundle that with number two here, which is equipment. So of course you need to have the right equipment in order to be successful. Um, that's what we're going to be th we're talking about today here with the Centratec SLS 3D printers, of course. And then finally is materials, right? So as we're looking at um, an application, the material is key. The beautiful thing is that the standard materials for the Centratec kits today, um, even without entering that experimental range, are really incredible. The PA12 uh, gives you a lot of strength, a pretty good amount of stiffness, high temperature resistance and great surface finish. Um, and the TPE material is gonna give you some flexibility to your parts, also an incredible surface finish, almost like a soft touch type of finish to it. Um, and you're gonna get that flexibility and rebound that you don't typically see um, in an FDM uh, TPE part. Uh, so I'll, I'll share some uh, details about those here as we move forward. So in the PA12, this is gonna be our nylon material. Again, this is really a good balance of strength and stiffness. Very good for fine details. Um, this is typically the material if you're uh, outsourcing today, SLS or MJP technology. Uh, this is the base material that everybody has been using for years. Um, and it has you know, really incredible properties. Of course, nylon's very tough, a super robust material. Um, I'll give you guys a quick example here of a, a customer story. So uh, we had a customer who reached out to us um, and asked us to uh, do a, a quick test part for them. They sent over uh, these geometries. What I really need in here is like a dime for scale because this part on the right is about the size of a dime. The one on the left is maybe the size of, you know, maybe two quarters, two nickels, something like that. So these are super small parts. Um, these are actually used in a really interesting um, electrical application and these are um, intended to hold like uh, radio antennas, super custom radio antennas. You can see the geometries are really complex. Um, these actually eventually um, would will enter into a mass production phase of hundreds of thousands of per year and will go into the molding process. But 
in the beginning, they wanted to, of course, just see if their geometry was right. Are they in the ballpark? So we printed a set for them. They got the pieces. Within two days, they reached out and said, you know, the parts are great, but geez, you know, we uh, made a minor mistake. Can you print us a couple more? We've got an updated design. And we said, yeah, sure. So we printed five more, um, sent them out to them, and uh, they worked out great. They discovered another minor issue, and uh, they came back and said, hey, can you print 70 parts for us? And we said, yeah, sure. What was really crazy is because of the size of these parts, we were able to print all 70 pieces in a single 12-hour build. So we just threw them in the printer, went home, came back in the morning, all the parts were completely done. Um, and so that whole process, three development cycles and doing a quick 70 piece short run production, which actually went out into their uh, customer beta testing, um, that only took us 10 business days to complete. Right? And that was with shipping back and forth. Right? If you have this technology in house, it can allow you to just completely change the way uh, that you do business. Right? And imagine each one of these, if they were injection molded, that first test part, that might have taken six weeks to get the first mold made. Then they discover a problem, and it might take another two weeks to fix that tool and make a change. Then they discover another problem. It takes another two weeks before they can get that first 70 set of parts. So in the same time period that might have taken us maybe two, three months um, with injection molding, we're able to do with 3D printing, and there was no investment in tooling. So now when they went to tooling, they already knew the design work. They already did a 70-piece beta run. They already had customer feedback, and they were able to make that tool once and make it perfect instead of going through that, that full um, back and forth with their vendors. It's a really great application and um, the, the perfect example of how this technology uh, can be used in a short run production capacity to, to truly help save a business significant dollars and cents. Now, uh, the next one's a little bit um, more personal to us and perhaps one uh, that some of you are familiar with. If any of you guys have ever requested a sample part from us, um, you will receive this piece here. Um, this is our strength demonstration part. Uh, this is printed out of the PA-12 material in our Centratech kits. We print about 10 of these every time, um, every time we print. Um, when we're trying to do a, a large batch, like let's say before a trade show, we actually run two batches a day and, we, and um, we have two machines here. And so we're able to produce about 40 of these pieces every day. Um, and you know, for us, like about one day typically is enough capacity to last us about two to three weeks on these parts. This is something that we do every day. So if you guys would like to see a part in person, um, you know, get an idea of the strength and the surface detail, um, shoot me a message after this. We'd be happy to get one of these out to you. They're a really nice part because they're, they've got a texture on one side, as you can see there, they've got lots of details to them, but they're also very strong. So this part here. Um, if you've ever visited our shop, you'd see we have a 150 pound heavy bag in the back. We hang this, uh, the heavy bag on this part all the time. Uh, it's plenty strong, doesn't break, doesn't snap. Um, and it really showcases the toughness of the material while simultaneously giving you a beautiful surface finish. Um, of course, we also have the TPE materials, the flexible materials, which are incredible. We have folks who are using these for prototyping seals and gaskets like you see in the bottom left-hand corner there, or right-hand corner. On the top here, you can see a grip, and you can start to see a little bit of that surface uh, texture on there. It's really hard to explain how amazing this surface finish feels on the hand, but this could be used for end-use applications, custom grips, custom tools, a soft touch on your tooling, soft touch grippers um, for your end effectors on your robotic arms. All of those types of applications are a fantastic fit um, with the TPE material. And what I'd like to do here, I'm gonna flip over uh, to like a live demo. I'll stop sharing my screen. What I wanna do is um, walk you guys around the shop briefly. I'll show you guys the Centratech kit and the S2 in person. Um, I'll be there for scale so you can get an idea um, of kind of the size of the machines relatively. And then I'm going to flip everything over to Dominic, who will share uh, a bit more about the Centratech S2. All right. So hopefully you guys can see on the video feed, uh, see me here. So I'm going to go ahead and... Looks good. All right. Cool. Great. So uh, for those of you who haven't been to our shop in Miami, I'll give you guys like a brief tour. So... You know, when you first walk in, this is what, what the office looks like. On the right-hand side here, this black unit, 
This is our Centratech S2, which I'll show you in a minute. Right on the left over here, you can see our little mini farm of uh, Centratech kits. So I'll throw this guy, this computer on a cart, which might make it a little more stable for you. There we go. To give you guys a sneak peek of the, the Centratech printer. So we take a look here. This guy is actually on. Um, it's sort of like glowing bright there. You can see that. That cycling of heat, that is our uh, preheat process on the Centratech printer. So right now we've got the printers warming up. Uh, it's morning time here in Miami, and so we came in, we, got, we took a batch of parts off the printers, and we went ahead and uh, heated that up so that we can do some prints later in the day. I'll see if I can give you guys a little bit of a view inside the kit so you can wrap your head around that. So we have some latches, of course, over here. It's a safety stop in the back. Up here, we actually have a safety key control so that there's no way that we can turn the system on if the key's not in. So that protects, of course, folks' eyes from lasers or whatever else. Uh, you might be worried about there. Um, see if I can let you guys see inside. One of the things that's really unique about the, the Centratech 3D printers is the just really incredible build quality of the system. So what you're going to see inside is everything is metal. Um, we're going to be seeing sheet metal parts, aluminum extrusion, custom machine parts, industrial, you know, belts, pulleys, uh, drive wheels, bearings. This is not a... Um, it's not a, you know, a, a hobby level 3D printer. This is absolutely an industrial level 3D printer, just on a small scale. Um, we see major materials companies all around the world utilizing these kits, major research institutions, national labs, using this 3D printer to do all sorts of material development, testing, prototyping, the whole thing. So uh, that gives you an idea. I'm a pretty giant dude, I'm about 6'4", so give you an idea about generally the size on that machine there. All right, now we're gonna move over here to the S2. So the S2 is really a different animal um, than the Centratech kit. Um, there's two components to the system here, really three components. We have a sintering station, a cleanup station, and a material handling station. So um, I'll see if I can give you guys a brief overview. So um, on this side here, this is our sintering station. You'll see it kind of looks empty right now. And that's for a uh, good reason. The system has a really interesting uh, component to it here, which is the material handling cart. So the way this works is we take the uh, cart, we can move it from one location to the next. When we move the cart around, what we're doing is we're actually moving all of the important parts of the system together. So here we have our, um, our center build volume there. We would have powder, fresh powder on one side, um, the older powder on the other side. All the powder stays in the cart. So let's say you're using multiple powders. Let's say you maybe have some TPE parts in the morning and some nylon parts in the afternoon. You can have two different carts, right? So you can buy the whole system a la carte, if you will, right? So you can buy as many of the individual components as you want. It's a modular system. And it really allows you to truly optimize. So... Um, you know, maybe if you have a lot of PA-12 parts, you can have multiple PA-12 carts. Maybe if you um, have the, a bunch of TPE parts, but a few PA-12, you can mix and match as you need. So the way it works is you uh, take the system, kind of move it into place here. <laughs> Knock over our, uh, some of our marketing materials there. And uh, that's it. Then uh, you're able to start the printer and print your parts. Over here is our uh, material cleanup station. That's gonna include um, like a vacuum system to clean up your powder. Um, that's where you can store all your tools to you know, brush the parts off and, and uh, remix powder in the future. So um, hopefully that gives you guys a good um, overview into uh, how the technology works and about the size, relative size of the systems. Uh, Dominic will be able to dive in much deeper here on the uh, Central Tech S2. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and pass everything over to you, Dominic. Yeah, all right. Let me see, I may have to make you a host. Give me just a moment.
Here you go. You should be able to share your screen now. Okay. All right. Then I'll take over, huh? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Alex. Um, I think uh, I don't have much to add about your great introduction of, of, of our product. Um, but I'm here to focus a little bit on the S2 and then, of course, answer all the questions that you might have. So let me just find out how to share part of my screen again. Just a second. Okay. There we go. You should be seeing a presentation now. Okay, Alex, can you confirm? Yes, sir. It's looking good. Um, it's not, okay. Not, there you go. Now you're in presentation. Now I'm presentation. Okay, fine, fine. Okay, so um, you've heard about Centrotech. You've heard about our technology. We're a Swiss company, and I'm also speaking to you from from beautiful Switzerland. I can show you the weather. It's, uh, it's kind of cloudy here. There's the uh, University of Applied Science over there. And uh, to the other side, there's uh, also an S2. <laughs> so hello from the other side of the, the ocean for those of you who are in the US. And um, yeah, let me show you a little bit more about Syntratech. Uh, if you've heard about the parts that we can make, this is from a giant company called Geberit, which is a good customer of ours. They do uh, prototyping, as you've seen, you can, can save a lot of time if you use the technology to skip uh, tooling um, for the prototyping stage. And uh, you can also do final parts manufacturing. So this is actually a Swiss company that does chairs. You can see this part is a complex part. Uh, it's printed as one part, and this is a hinge that can be uh, clipped in and out of, of a chair. So this here is a headpiece, and uh, this chair actually has over 20 parts, or I think it, it's exactly 20 parts that are manufactured with our technology. And um, there's no prototyping, but but end customer uh, end use parts. You've heard Alex say one to 500. That is a good range, actually. It should come to no surprise to you that our own S2 system that we're going to talk about a little bit more has lots of parts that have been printed first by S1 <laughs> kits because there were no S2 and now also by other S2s um, that are printed with our technology. And uh, we did for, for many parts, we did our own calculations. And for some, uh, for example, um, there's, there's one that we use in our linear, linear rails. Uh, we found out that we had to, to make about 2,500 to uh, have uh, cost effectiveness in, uh, with uh, injection molding. And uh, yeah, we did, we, did, we did seven iterations on this part until it was right. Uh, of course, not with any tooling. And now we're doing it, we, we, we manufacture it. And you can imagine the cash flow is great because there's no investment in tools. And uh, yeah, so uh, this is one part and we have many parts in the system like that. Uh, so we use our own technology, which is uh, you know, a good thing because if we wouldn't see that it's, uh, it's, it's better to use it, then probably other people won't. Uh, so, uh, that's uh, we are we are our own first customer here <laughs> with uh, with the S2 uh, system. This has also been true with uh, with the kit and the S1 with the kit. We just had one lens holder we manufactured ourselves, but now that we have more more printers out there, more capabilities, uh, uh, we have all sorts of parts that we do ourselves. So this is the the S2. You've heard about the components, the the uh, material core unit here with all the the powder inside, the uh, sintering station over here, the material handling station. And my goal a little bit now would be to show you how you would interact if you were the proud owner of such a system. And what you see here before, in front of you, oh, let's go back, is, is, is actually the basic cell. So basic cell consists of the material handling station, um, 
the, the laser sintering station, as well as one material core. Um, and you can then, of course, expand it uh, to your own needs. You can scale horizontally, add more cards, etc. And the goal here is for the S2, if you're asking yourself uh, what, what has been our reasoning behind this whole product, it's basically to close the gap between prototyping and manufacturing and to enable application development. So you get your, your basic S2 cell, you, you, um, you develop your application, you test, you refine, etc. And once you have it, um, you will not need to change manufacturing technology but actually go into manufacturing with the same system. And if you need more manufacturing throughput, you can scale up, you know, and, and match, match uh, uh, the manufacturing demand to your uh, solutions capability. So you can start small with a relatively small invest of a basic cell. And then you can, you know, once you have developed your application, you can then go all the way and scale up. And uh, that's, that's the reason that we did the S2, really to close this, to close this gap there and enable, uh, enable a lot more companies to go all the way and develop their application and bring them to, to market. So let's talk a little bit about how you use such an S2 cell. And uh, so this slide shows you basically all the operations uh, that are involved um, that when you have this system that you would undertake. And I'll run you through that quickly, just that you get a feeling what it would mean to you know, operate such a system at your place. So let's start here uh, top right. This is, uh, you know, it says printing. So the printing is done in the laser sintering station. Um, and printing is basically, you know, you have powder in there and the laser selectively sinters the powder together into parts. So after the printing is done, um, you go into the step that where you uh, recover the printed parts out of the, the build. So what you do is you remove the card, as you've seen Alex do, uh, do from the, uh, the laser sintering station and uh, move it into material handling station. Basically the output of the printing step is one such card um, that contains uh, used powder. This is where the orange indicates, uh, the, uh, is indicating um, used powder. And it produces this used powder as well as the parts, right? So you go to the material handling station, you can then there recover those um, parts. Uh, next, um, after you've, you've recovered those, what you get is the parts themselves, right? You can then go into further post-processing if you want to have other surface finishes, but there's no post-processes needed if you are, are happy with the already you know, good surface finish that, that comes um, native to the process, uh, or there's, there's certainly no process post-processing needed in terms of part strength, so you can just use those parts and continue. But let's say in the S2 ecosystem, um, our goal is to start the next print, so you've um, produced used powder. Remember, you, the, the system uses powder layer for layer and just melts the things that's needed for the, for the part. So you get used powder. And how do you, um, uh, how do you uh, create new print-ready powder? You need to refresh it a bit with uh, new powder. So virgin powder, which is blue there. And the ratio for PA12 is uh, that you take like 30% of the volume um, from fresh powder and 70% of the used powder. You let this um, mix and sieve in the material handling station. I'm going to show you a little bit more closely how this is done and in the following slides. And this is done also in this material handling station. What you get out of there is print ready powder and this print ready powder you load into a new cart and then you can start printing. So basically SLS, um, polymer SLS, uh, what is done to, to print is you, you need to have the powder that is print ready, which is a mix of, um, of, of uh, powder that has already been used in the process and some new virgin powder. And uh, yeah, to get this mix, uh, we have this material handling station, which, you know, those two main functions, which is helps you recover the parts. And it also takes care of this 
uh, of this uh, mixing process. So recycling of the used powder to create new printing punch. Also one core thing that has been uh, missing from many SLS solutions or virtually all SLS solutions in the market is that this here is a closed system, meaning um, closed in terms of it's a full solution where it takes care of all the steps that are necessary to, to recover used powder and get it ready for, for printing. So this is what you do with the, the S2. Um, it's basically uh, uh, lets you manage all this powder flow easily. And to expand a little bit further on, uh, on how this looks. So let's go through the, through, the, through the process. First, you load with the material handling station new powder. Like, I'm sorry, print ready powder. Uh, we have it all color coded, by the way. So this this cylinder here is what you actually get in our solution. There are also labeled with text for those that um, uh, are colorblind, of course. Um, they're also color coded for easy identification. Then you, uh, once you have loaded it, or before that, I mean, it doesn't matter the order. You get your um, print data on the machine. Let me just quickly show you, I'm sure I'm going to show you another screen on how you get this print data on the machine. Uh -huh. Let me share the other screen. Okay, so here you have, uh, I hope you can see it, um, our uh, desktop software. And this you can use to prepare a print job. So let me um, load a part. For example, this very unspectacular, unspectacular part into the pin set. I can, uh, I'll, I'll add some more cooler parts later. And yeah, you can place them freely in the build volume. Let's make some copies there. I can, can inspect them. And uh, yeah, you can also, let's, build volume is quite big. So there's some tools for you to handle the camera a little bit better. So, um, don't have to forget that basically um, you can you can put the parts anywhere where you want. So for example, if you want to print it like this, like free floating, this is not FDM, it's not SLA, that's no problem. You can do whatever geometry you want. So this is um, the build volume um, the f uh, for PA12. You notice this cylinder here, what is that? This is actually a, an area where you can't print, so don't put your parts in there. It's put out a warning if you do that. This is uh, our um, high fidelity, high quality temperature sensor because SLS is all about temperature control and we have this area reserved for our temperature measurements of the built surface. Basically to get perfect readings. In, uh, in uh, previous systems we had this over the whole area which is less accurate. So we have it now with a, with a high expensive high, uh, high accuracy equipment. All right, so um, when you've done this, you can preview the, uh, this is, those are actually the laser movements. We can zoom in here. If you want to preview them, you can do that. Uh, let's also, you know, have some more interesting parts loaded in there. Just a second, get the more of a feeling what Atlas can do, right? So what I'm loading now, if, you've, if you're following our YouTube channel, if not, uh, subscribe. This is a drone and actually a colleague of mine, Andy, has designed this one. So uh, uh, this is the drone body and uh, yeah, free form. You can see these kind of things here. There's, uh, they are the, the arms where the motors go on um, and then the rotors on top of them. Uh, they are, uh, you know, like optimized for weight, but still uh, strength and rigidity. And uh, basically the SLS process does not care about how complex these parts are. Right, okay. This is like a, the top cover of the drone and there's some, uh, some battery in there and stuff and other stuff. So great fun with SLS. You can do whatever crazy shape you want to do. And uh, yeah, there, can easily fit multiple drones in this in this volume. So how to get this on the printer? This here is uh, like the black side version. You can simply 
press generate print file and what you get is a print file that you can do on uh, can you lo can you lo you can load this on a usb stick and go to your sintering station and uh, load it from there so i'm sharing the other slide or you can you know, re retrieve the the parts via network it's also network enabled yeah, there's some customers who don't want to do that. Uh, then you can do it, of course, offline as well. So this is uh, now, uh, then, then you will start to print, right? Put the trolley, the cart in there, so, uh, press start on the touch screen. This is like a real time demo, so you can get a feeling on how the print speed is. If these layers are uh, 150 microns thick, right? So this is uh, real time. Let's let's wait for uh, for another. Uh, it's the same same animation. Oh, okay. Now this is times six um, uh, speed. Let's go back to the beginning where we have real time. Okay. So yeah, you can see the the laser is is, is quite fast here. We have a scanning system now for the S two. This is a very uh, good one. Expensive stuff, but leads to very accurate results and yeah thanks to this galvo scanning system you can uh, be pretty fast um, like you don't need to do any unnecessary movements the laser just points to where it needs to needs to go all right so after you've uh, you've printed it um so basically this is the cart this is still a laser sintering station the, the parts are now in there you go to the material handling station here you have uh, a vacuum where you can remove uh, the power that has not been unused. We have some some tools. You notice there's even a Swiss little flag in here. Okay, <laughs> uh, so there's uh, some tools you can use to to recover the um, the parts. We also have in the S2 lineup some post processing systems. If you want to go further, get some other surface finishes with your parts. Um, but just okay, and then you retrieve the used powder and uh, go. To create new powder and um, at this point let me just show you a little bit so they get you a feel that you get the feeling on how you use the, the actual system on how you create um, new print ready materials so you have a touch screen here and the cool thing now is it's something that um, we've invested a lot of, of time and effort in is that you know you don't have to be uh, smart to uh, to use the system. And what do I mean with that is um, you can even let engineers do it. <laughs> because oh, engineers, they usually don't like to read the manual and stuff like that. So <laughs> hard to train them, very expensive. And of course, you can use uh, service technicians and so on. And but, but also maybe somebody from your marketing team who usually don't want to let operate uh, the system because they don't, they are not trained. Um, so the training is relatively minimal and uh, there's a step-by-step -step guide for like everything that you need to do. So for example, this is a screenshot from the, from the touch screen. Um, this here is like one screen and uh, this is the first screen um, that lets you through the process of creating a new print powder, so the mixing. And basically you have some tasks that you need to do and um, you can see here, um, um, Somebody has now checked those two checkboxes um, and confirmed that he's done it. So he's uh, equipped now protective uh, gloss and and a dust mask. Um, you know, for for safety reasons, the powder is not toxic, but you also don't want to inhale it, right? And uh, so it go, it 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 goes through with you step by step. The mixing itself is automated, so you don't need to um, need to be at the system, but what you need to do manually is put the powder in, right? So this is done like this step by step. So what you do, what you, you, what you do, what you would do now is uh, get some used powder, get some virgin powder, put them into the material handling station, let it sieve it, and then you get the used powder and take it out, or start your next print immediately if you want to. Yeah, you can see this is the last step of uh, taking the used powder out. Um, you can do this. You don't have to, you know, scoop it up or anything. This is done with a, with a vacuum. That's pretty quick. You can see also see this 
to-dos that you need to do. Um, use the, the, we call it, this, this is the, called the vortex, um, the vacuum to, to, uh, re to retrieve the used powder. And you should do this step by step. The cool thing is here um, for all of you who have worked in a production setup as well, you don't need to make any Excel sheets anymore. What needs to be done um, for your quality assurance and um, quality processes, because basically if somebody uses the system, he will, you know, in a non-intrusive way, um, check all the necessary stuff. Um, that needs to be done. So for example, if you want to say you have an ISO 9000 um, process where you're certified and uh, you also want to have your production certified for good quality, uh, you can be re uh, like rest, you should be assured that um, when the system is used, it's used in the right way. And there's a lot of stuff. I mean, we know it as well because we have, we do our manufacturing of parts, but also of those machines, we are a manufacturer. We know what, ma what it means to manufacture. Uh, so we also designed this in a way to keep this uh, um, as uh, as simple as possible for people who want to do a quality, a high quality manufacturing setup, uh, because that's what we want to do as well. Uh, so we invest a lot of, of thoughts into that. Basically, result in a system that can be can can be operated um, simply and also has this kind of nice effect, where you can uh, guarantee that the system operates correctly. Right, so this has been a quick um, on the on, like more on, this, on the on also the software side and how you operate the system for you to get the first uh, you know feel on what it would mean to to use an S2. And uh, yeah, I hope you you got uh, got some impressions. And uh, uh, as Alex said, uh, these things are now shipping. We've been to our, our team has been to Poland this week and other uh, EU. Uh, countries in installing uh, this is now shipping to the to the states and uh, yeah we hope that many people are going to develop some awesome applications on this system so this concludes my part here of um, of introducing the printer I see there's a, a q a has already started I can address this first question how does yes do compare to high priced SLS printers I think to finish off before I hand over for uh, for uh, to Alex to do the uh, the rest of the the program, uh, I'll, I'll answer this one quickly. So this is a multi-layered question. How does it compare? There, um, there com the comparison can be made in terms of quality uh, uh, of the parts of uh, cost per part, like how much does it cost you, um, production efficiency, and also price of the whole system. And since it's an interesting question, I'm going to answer uh, all the four points. So how does it compare quality wise? And I'm talking about the part quality. So here we are with the S2, um, we are on a very high level, meaning that um, uh, in terms of like uh, uh, all the, the material parameters that you would test for, um, elongation until break, um, like impact strength and so on. Uh, it's top notch. It's outperforms high priced SLS systems. This could be an issue only if you're thinking on switching to high priced SLS printers later on, where you maybe need to look again um, at your uh, at your um, function parameters of uh, like functional parameters of your part, but it's still okay. So here you get very high quality in terms of optical quality. Uh, I mean. Um, resolution of the parts and uh, 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 accuracy. It's also very good. The laser it uses is a fiber laser, um, which is very, you know, it's a very accurate beam profile. So you get, uh, get nice sharp edges. It's also, uh, here it's also better um, than the high priced systems. And the overall accuracy is also, uh, is, is also very competitive. And it's, it's, uh, it's all about temperature management here. And I have to say, yeah, we have a little bit of smaller uh, build volume, which makes it easier to have uh, accurate control. Um, but nonetheless, we have like even the high price system, they, when they have, they, they have multi-layered heating zones, we have that as well, even though we have a smaller space. So we get like very, very good uh, temperature control there. How does it compare price-wise? So the whole system um, uh, is about 10 to 20% of industrial uh, usually high priced uh, solution is also industrial um, solution r one our system uh, 
So, uh, and, and of course you get this whole powder recovery thing um, as well, which you would have to usually, uh, is this your problem to solve? All right. How does it compare with cost per part? So now this is an interesting thing, is if you actually buy more um, Sinter stations and more carts, you get the uh, same cost per uh, throughput than you would get with a high price system. So the upside you have is you can start small and scale up, but you get the same cost per throughput if you compare it, for example, to, uh, to established and also newcomers in a, in a high priced SLS system. Okay, so I think I talked enough about this question. <laughs> uh, and uh, to make space for Alex, uh, uh, or also elaborate further on this if, if it pops up in the Q&A. Okay. Very good, Dominic. Thank you very much. Uh, that was an in incredibly uh, valuable introduction to the system, and uh, I think it was a great summary uh, for everybody on the call here. I know um, we're just about at the end of our time that we had scheduled. Um, we'd like to stay on the line for you know anybody who has additional questions, um, and we'll be happy to address those um, one at a time for you. Uh, one thing I do want to make sure to do is uh, share my screen again with my uh, contact information. Um, if any of you guys are looking to um, learn more about the system and, and maybe have some colleagues who would like uh, perhaps a, a similar uh, version of today's call, but on a one-on-one -on -one basis, we're happy to do that. Um, just let us know and um, you can reply to an email. My, my email address and phone number is here, um, and we're happy to address those. So I'll leave this screen up here as we take questions. Um, Liz, are you still on the line there? I am, Alex. Okay. Um, did any other questions come in we can address? There's one. Yeah, we have another, que we have another question about the temperature. What temperature can the build chamber reach, and what is the delta between this ambient temperature and the temperature under laser? To answer that. All right, let's tackle this question. So, what can it safely reach? It's uh, 190 degrees Celsius. Now, this is okay. Um, the question there's spill chamber, but I think the, uh, the the question probably was also targeted in, in what, like, uh, if you have a material, how, how high uh, of a, a melting point can you? achieve safely uh, inside the system. So if you, if you have a material that melts over 190 degree Celsius, um, and that is, you know, that fits the SLS uh, technology requirements, then uh, you can't use it, but there's, you know, there's many that are below. Um, the, the, the rest of the build chamber won't reach this high of a temperature, but it is like normal for, for, for SLS, but this is, you know, the maximum temperature that you can go um, for your uh, powder surface. So the next uh, question or part of the question was, what is the delta between the ambient temperature and temperature under laser? So also there, the ambient temperature of the air, um, if you go, uh, let's say, uh, like PA12 or similar, similar material, let's say melting point about 100 and, uh, 84, 85 degrees Celsius, and then the environment temperature of the air would be kept at maybe, uh, let's say about 150 degrees Celsius. Um, this is post-process parameter, we can do it higher. Uh, but uh, there, um, also addressing this question in more detail, I think um, the interesting part here is what is the diff temperature differential between areas that are uh, melted, like the melt pools, and the powder areas um, that are not melted. So just isolating the rest of the build chamber, ambient temperature, etc., but just looking, looking at the, the temperature um, surface. So there's, in, uh, this is very interesting for material um, developers and scientists. So there the temperature the differential is just uh, very few degrees. Um, so uh, the actual laser just um, like with the S2, we get down to one degree Celsius uh, that the laser actually needs to increase um, for it to start melting. And then of course, since you have in the material, you have an asymmetric uh, uh, 
relationship between uh, heating up and cooling down. So the laser heated up by one tube uh, can, can be uh, up to eight or 10 degrees differential there. Uh, heated up, then this melt pool cools down but stays liquid. So this is uh, hopefully addresses the question or sheds a little bit more light on this topic of temperature okay. and temperature differentials. Thank you. Yeah, we can also go, yeah, we can go really technical if you want, and I can also talk a little mm -hmm. bit more about <laughs> um, the efficiency and uh, cost and marketing, uh, marketability. Mm -hmm. um, uh, of the, the another, another question we have is um, what new materials are you planning or are in the works to be introduced sure. to run on either the S2 or the Sintra Tech kit? So will you be expanding that? Absolutely. Of, uh, raw materials. Okay, so to answer this, first of all, this uh, uh, disclaimer, uh, we don't have a, uh, a public uh, timeline and also the materials I'm going to mention now, don't know when they will coming out, but actually at Formnext, for those of you who are going to visit, we will be showing some new materials uh, if everything works out. Um, and uh, uh, there will be quite a few new materials that we can show there hopefully um, so make sure to visit us uh, we are definitely working on new materials the one we have now um, it's a cool thing I mean the for example the FDM you have you have more of a selection of different materials uh, uh, on the other hand um, the PA 12 we have as well as the TP they uh, encompass a very wide material parameter uh, envelope so you can do uh, parts that are really strong and high temperature resistance as, at the same time with the same material right? or parts that are flexible um, uh, yeah, with, with just those two materials. So you can do many, many applications with just those, those two materials. But what, what can be, what, what will be coming out, what, what we're looking at, we're looking at other polymers as well. We are uh, uh, looking at stuff like uh, PP, stuff, yes, PE, et cetera. And uh, yeah, when we're ready, definitely going to expect more materials on this. Fabulous. So piggybacking on that, we have another question about uh, the ease of changing materials on either the S2 or the Centratech kit between print jobs. I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Because I read another one, <laughs> I mixed it up. <laughs> yeah, the, what is the ease or uh, difficulty level of changing the material on either the Centratech kit or the S2 between print yeah. runs? So on the S2, it's trivial. Using all the card, that's it. Um, with the kit, it's more involving. You need to clean it out, um, especially so actually, if you go from the TPE back to the PA12, you need to do a very good job. We even have it, you know, it's even disabled in the software. So you, you need to contact support um, to have this enabled because you, you're going to wreck your system if you don't um, clean it up very good because there's some, you know, um, TPE remaining in the kit, which can, uh, uh, which, which it would, if it would remain when you're switching back to PA12, then it would melt um, and uh, clog up the, uh, the the platforms, the rails, etc., and uh, render your system, you know, inoperable, kaput. And then, uh, yeah, it would have to be expensive repairs there. So you need to be educated when you do that. And switching from PA12 to TPE is not that much of a problem. So what usually um, our customers that have uh, kits, they buy two if they want to do both. So they buy a machine per material. With the S2, again, it's, it's trivial. You have your other card to just switch it up. Right. And it, I'll, I'll uh, also mention that um, we do have a, a pretty large percentage of customers that do both materials. And exactly as Dominic mentioned, um, you know, two systems is a really easy way to address this problem. That's what we do here in house as well. Um, and it, it definitely makes everybody's life easier. Um, and, you know, a lot of times, you know, folks are like, oh, geez, you know, a whole second system. I mean, one thing that's really important to keep in mind is just the extremely low cost of the Centratech kit in order to have access to this technology and, and to do this type of work. 
Um, so, you know, if you're looking at um, bringing in, let's say, uh, Centratech kit to print, you know, TPE and then perhaps another to print TA12 and perhaps another to work on an experimental material, you could do all of that with all of the accessories and even support plans and trainings from our team. You're still going to come in at, you know, 10%, 20% of any competitive system um, in terms of cost. And so um, we see folks, um, you know, across the map. Um, really adopting the technology. We always recommend, um, you know, if you just started dipping your toe in the water, select either the TPE or the TA12 as your starting point. Um, and we see a pretty large percentage of customers come back relatively quickly um, looking for a second system to, to print some additional material. So, um, you know, that's a, that's a great strategy on the kit. And, you know, because of that, um, we actually keep the Centratech kits here in-house in Miami. So, like, literally you could give us a call today and we could ship it out this afternoon. Um, so, you know, for folks who are looking to um, experiment with materials, know that, you know, it's not like you have to place an order and, and wait, you know, six or weeks or eight weeks or 10 weeks, like uh, some of the other systems on the market at this scale, um, we have it in stock, ready to rock and roll. It can ship out the next day. Thank you. Um, to that end, I have another question here. Uh, from the panel about how the S2 compares to the XYZ 3D printers and um, benefits of the S2. Okay, XYZ 3D printers, they, they are not really in the business of SLS, um, but I presume you're meaning their SLS system. Um, so how does it compare there? So uh, the, it's a, it's a, it's a big thing that we are focusing on is on on how how easy it is and how effective you are in operating the system right? so what we've done is it, yeah, you've seen with a cart um, the material core unit that we call it um, handling station sintering station it's it's a thought out solution um, that takes care of all the the powder handling and so on so forth so the XYZ is just you know it's an insular system. It's just an island. Uh, also in terms of price, you know, you get the whole solution that we offer for less um, than what, what the XYZ system um, is quoted for. Uh, also in terms of uh, technology that is used, uh, the, the fiber laser that we use uh, is very nice, leads to very nice, uh, highly resolute parts. You, of course, got the CO2 laser in... Um, in the XYZ printer, if the question was about uh, their SLS offering. Also, they, you know, don't have a lot of first-hand experience because they had some, uh, they haven't shipped that many yet to uh, customers that, uh, that we also cater to. Yeah, and I think that, you know, that, that speaks a lot to, you know, the difference between Centratech and a, a lot of the other, you know, companies on the market. Effectively, um, and Dominic, yeah, certainly you can speak to this better than me, but uh, Centratech really invented this new category of, you know, compact and cost-effective SLS systems. This isn't like a side adventure for Centratech or... Um, you know, uh, it looks like a new market opportunity. The company was was built on these ideas from day one. And, you know, from what I can see, every step along the way has been building towards the S2. Uh, the Centratech kit is, you know, an incredibly powerful system, a great way to start learning about the technology. Um, and the S2 takes everything in the kit really to the next level. Um, and what we see with folks who are, you know, comparing systems, what we always say is, you know, ask for that real-time print video um, of a part printing, like uh, Dominic showed. See how many people are willing to share that with you. You know, ask for a sample part, um, you know, do a service project and, you know, uh, put the parts to the test and, and see in terms of part finish and surface quality if, uh, you know, what the system looks like. Um, we find that folks who kind of go through that process um, usually land on uh, trusting an organization that's built their entire reputation on this technology and, and really kind of created this new category. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Dominic. I think at this point, we've kept everybody over about 20 minutes. And There's one uh, question. To honor, 
to honor your time. We'll take any any leftover questions or any that come in afterwards and we'll reach out to everyone personally and make sure that um, there's no uh, no threads left untangled. So I'll turn it over to Alex to send us all off on the rest of our day today. All right, Liz, I appreciate that. Um, we definitely can do that. Dominic, did you mention you had one quick question you might be able to address there? Oh, okay, I just uh, typed out the answer now. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Oh, perfect. Well, yeah, it was a question about the can we go over 190 degrees Celsius and at this time? No, not really. But okay. maybe it can work with materials that are close to that uh, still. Beautiful. All right, awesome. Okay, guys. So, um, Dominic, I really want to thank you for your time. I know um, it's a little bit late in the day for you, and uh, it's kind of amazing technology that we're able to be communicating here um, with our whole audience here in the United States. Uh, thank you very much for your time and uh, all of your effort. I think it was incredibly valuable um, and not something that we often get the treat of uh, speaking directly with the founder and CEO of a technology partner. So again, thank you for your time. It's very much welcome. Uh, for all of you folks who joined us on the call today, we also appreciate that. We appreciate you guys sticking around um, for the session. I, I can see that uh, virtually everyone who joined the call has stayed on for all of the questions, which is something we love to see. I'm sure that um, your teams or yourselves may have some additional thoughts or concerns. Um, don't hesitate to reach out. My contact information is there on the screen. You can reply back to any of the uh, emails or meeting invites that you guys have had, and we'd be happy to jump on a call, talk about a service project, get you guys some demo parts, um, and start the process of how we can uh, help you guys to implement uh, this type of SLS technology within your organization. So uh, thank you all again. Um, we will be sending out a recording of this session uh, to all the attendees here afterwards. So if um, you guys missed anything or you need to share anything, uh, we'll make sure to, to get a copy out to you to, to share with your team um, here as well. So with all that said, thank you, Dominic. Thank you, Liz. And thank you, everybody, for attending. And uh, we look forward to catching you all in a future webinar. Um, thanks again. I right, thank from my side as well. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you, Alex. Thank, thank you, Lynx. And thank you, the whole team of 3D Camera. for being a great partner. And uh, yeah, we look forward to work with you all in the future. All right. Have a good day, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.